up, what up, what up? Happy Tuesday, happy Tuesday. Guys, what is going on? Man. What is going on, everyone? I am Shadal Coles, the patron of The Simpsons. I am joined by my lovely wife. Lauren. And man, what a week it has been. <laughs> That's an understatement. I know that a lot of us are probably drained with the coronavirus and now leading into these protests and stuff. It's, it's, it, the first six months of 2020 have been wild. Like, ever since... We're not even through the sixth month. We're in the sixth month. I, I, That's what's so sad. I already know these next, you know, what, 20, oh, 30, man. 20, 25 days, whatever is remaining is going to be crazy. Um yeah something new every month it's been it's been downhill since like you know kobe died in february <laughs> pop smoke r.i.p juice world even you know even back in december when juice world passed it's it's been just down down the drain we didn't know we were screwed you know, back then it, our wedding was kind of the peak and then everything just kind of went downhill from Yo, there this is that first episode we put out in 2020 where it's like man it's gonna be great oh we got this gosh. happening this and that. that's really depressing to got look sitting back there on. like you thought you had plans, didn't you? Right, right. No, that's really sad to look back on because we really were. We were like at a high mm-hmm. for so many reasons. Personal business, all of it. And yeah, yeah uh, you know, that changed. You know what I just realized, <laughs> but I'm not going to stop the podcast for? What? I don't have my water. Oh, no. <laughs> that's so not good I'm just going to reach room. over and steal yours if I need some. So okay. just uh, FYI. It's okay. So don't backwash. You know what? We're we're married. It's okay. Oh my god! <laughs> I have a traumatic story about that, which I told you. Uh, you know. I, All right. Well, yeah. we're not eating food yeah. right now, yeah. so yeah, it's that's fine. disgusting. Okay, you brought back childhood <laughs> memories. Okay. So, anywho, we're back and and slightly better spirits. Um, okay. Before we get into this episode, <laughs> I just want to sure. say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone that listened to last week's episode. Uh, Uh, and the response was amazing through like youtube instagram twitter like anywhere that you could reach us we loved hearing everyone's response and and you know how they liked the episodes or their viewpoints or whatever we appreciate it like i said at the end of the episode Mm -hmm. that you even took the chance to to listen um it's it's very much appreciated yeah we we're very glad that it resonated with so many people um i have a lot of my friends and colleagues that i had encouraged to uh listen to it um, some of which knew I had a podcast, some of which didn't. Um, and just, I basically, I kept saying all week, I'm like, if you don't listen to any of our other episodes, this is the one to listen to because this is the one that has the most like substance and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's the most real and it's something that really needs to be said right now. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that some people mm-hmm. learned from it and some people were like, I mean, I'm already, I'm with you. Like, I didn't learn anything, but I, I agree with everything. Like, it's, so I think it was a good it's experience really, overall. At the end of the day, it's just sharing. I I really just wanted to share my viewpoints because mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's sad to say, but I feel like if I was to go through Facebook right now, maybe like 80% of my friends are white. Mm-hmm. Maybe even maybe if I even want to say seventy, it'll be like mm-hmm. majority of them white. So it's like, you know, I just feel like I have to say that because a lot of these times, I'm like the only black person in these rooms. So it's like this is just my viewpoint being the only black person because I know you can't relate if you've never been in my shoes, obviously. Mm-hmm. And this episode, you can you can look at it as a part two to last week. I have a lot of things I want to address. A lot of friends that I really have a problem with. <laughs> he gonna be calling people out oh, i mean not by name but no, like okay it, it, a lot of things are it, frustrating it's been an eye-opening week yeah so we just we would like to discuss it further you know last week when we recorded the first episode it was saturday this is another saturday and so it's a few days before the episode comes out And we have seen just how much can happen in even those few days. And so it's been a week. um, And we just have more things to talk about of everything we've been seeing, whether it's friends posting, Mm -hmm. businesses posting, um, reactions, and, you know, our thoughts on that coming from. And I think, like you said, I think us talking about it is very valid and important because you and I are coming from different 
you know, sets of eyes, essentially, you know, well, yeah. because we're not blind. Simple- we do. We do look different. We experience very different lives yeah. and we've grown up very God. differently. But then we can come to a common ground. And that's kind of what we want to encourage for people. The simple thing, you know, it's different when we can both walk into the same store, you know, do the same thing in that store, you know, follow each other, look for items, whatever, right. and then end up walking out because we don't find the item we want. Right. And you won't feel anything. Right. I feel a bit of guilt because I don't like I feel like I should be doing something. So someone doesn't portray me as, as right. Something similar to the TikTok I played last week where he was saying like you even even if you p- buy a package of gum, you have to display the receipt in the bag and you have to like be very obvious about everything. Mm-hmm. And I grew up doing that just because i'd get nervous like i i I was almost paranoid that like i don't know i just didn't want people to assume i didn't buy something if i did but it was never with the um underlying how i look stigma Mm -hmm. you know it was it was never that yeah so before i get into what i learned about my friends what you learned from your friends i just want to say As Iraq has said, as Obama has said, as Joe Biden has said, as a lot of people that are notable, you know, figures that we follow on Instagram and social media and all that, we needed a leader in these times. And mon- last Monday showed that the president isn't the leader that we need. In a time where you feel like everyone is against each other and everyone, like, it's very clear on, like, yo, you're either for everyone or you're for the racist. That's that's really what it is. It's not, you know, kill cops, not kill looters. It's not, you know, it, it's not any other stuff. It's as simple as it can be. Like, are you with understanding people and, and you know, these are humans that have a right to, to want the so-called American dream and just be able to feel safe and, and happy with their family and be able to create a family in the america that you say is so great or are we just gonna keep rocking out and let these people that have these other agendas keep pushing them on on minorities black people spanish people you know everyone that's not white essentially and it it showed where he was at and it's like okay cool I, i know this won't get handled and it it made me sad that i know that this won't get handled how everyone wants it to be handled that's kind of a thought that came across my mind is We've seen this before, you know, with um, immigrants and Mm -hmm. how he was turning everybody against Hispanic community people. And it, you know, it became this thing where that whole community was looked at as wrong or illegal or whatever the words you want to use are. When, first of all, so many of them are here legally and completely fine and they are American citizens. Mm -hmm. And then you have a a lot of them who are here, quote unquote, illegally, but not doing anything wrong. I mean, they have been here for like such a years. Right. Like it's such a it's a weird topic to talk about because technically, yes, they're illegal. And so that sounds bad. But if they've been here for like 20 years, they are upstanding. Right. They're upstanding citizens. Well, not citizens. They're upstanding people people who I'm just trying to use the right terminology who um who don't commit crimes, mm-hmm. who work their jobs. Some of them work way harder than what we do. Yep. Um, some of these people who know our laws better than we do, like all that kind of stuff, It's because it's, in, it's insane to me when people have to become a citizen of our country, the stuff they know better than American citizens mm-hmm. is crazy. But mm-hmm. yeah, so it was that whole thing where, you know, we looked at this whole community as disgusting or wrong or illegal when it wasn't fact. And, and so from being illegal. Right. Well, facts. <laughs> all right. Our parents. And, right. You know, right. Pants, all that stuff. Correct. My my grandparents, one on one side of my family, one, my grandparents came from Italy. So that's not that far removed, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, but yeah, so it's like you had you see that with that community and now it's just happening here again where we're we're um, we're grouping a whole community of people together and saying how they're bad. And on our side, we're we are not doing that. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it is it's don't get us wrong. 
we believe in Black Lives Matter. It's not the All Lives Matter statement. It may sound similar when we say we want everyone to, um, where's the word I'm going with this? Just get along and be happy and inclusion. And, That's yes, for. equality, all that justice. Um, but it is, it's very much so the, it's everyone against racism. It's not a black versus white issue. I think mm-hmm. that's been happening a lot or a or a black versus cop issue. Yep. It's been seen as that. And yes, we're highlighting the fact that there are a bunch of crooked cops. There are a bunch of people who are weighing that community down, mm-hmm. who need to be reprimanded, who need to be let go, and who need to be replaced by better trained employees. Mm-hmm. But... In, at the end of the day, it's all for the same purpose. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, yeah. I just think it's really sad because when you were what you were just saying is, we've seen in this um, presidential run, so many communities get um, just taken down. Essentially, Here's my just issue. from the thoughts of somebody who doesn't. They don't know what they're talking about. And didn't know what they were talking about since the beginning. I know. Like, again, it started with Make America Where's Great. Where's the humanity? No one, like, in, in what world was America great for, you know, the, I guess, minorities as a whole? If mm-hmm. you weren't white, like, when, at, mm-hmm. at what time was mm-hmm. it was it great? I've been thinking a lot about that recently, whole, how, you know, know, you bring up Thanksgiving and things like that. Yeah. And... It, it was funny because there was an episode I was watching some of the new episodes of Fuller House last night and there was an episode of Thanksgiving and, you know, they dress up as pilgrims and they do this little song and they did like all this stuff. And I just think how it's going to be very interesting that in reality, schools and history books leave out so much of what actually happened. There was actually I, I'd have to see if I could find it. There was a TikTok that basically said we were taught one way. Mm hmm. And we're completely leaving out a whole other reality that happened to shape a narrative. And Mm -hmm. it's very true because then, again, communities. You look at the Native American community. They are another community that is so far down when it comes to any kind of respect or understanding or help. And... It's just mind-blowing how it's almost like everything we've learned growing up I wouldn't call it completely wrong, but it's it's shaping a narrative. Term, it's 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 just making you see things one way instead of the whole yeah. whole picture of and I understand you have to teach kids in a certain way. You can't talk to yeah. a five year old and say, Hey, we slaughtered all these people. No. But as you grow through school, because I remember even middle and high school learning the it, same stuff. The term is whitewashed it, it that's as simple as that if i remember correctly i feel like i heard it say th- they said eurocentric the whole time that this stuff's been happening everyone keeps referencing mlk at the time that mlk was doing his protests dog no one liked him like correct <laughs> the, correct stop no one liked them they sick dogs on these people they put hoses on these people like no one liked these protests. What are we talking about? Oh, we should be peacefully protesting. I mm-hmm. totally get it. Looting and, and destroying stuff is bad. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to continue going back to the whole kid thing where it's like, if you keep not listening to your kid, what do you what do you expect them to do next? Except for sit there and poke you. Mm-hmm. You're not listening to these pokes? Okay, mm-hmm. we're going to sit there and punch you. Like, mm. it, Or I'm going to destroy something. I'm going to throw I'm gonna something start on the ground. I want I'm you gonna, to listen exactly. to me. That's what's happening. It's as simple as that. Mm-hmm. And it's mm-hmm. wild. And yeah, history's just been whitewashed over uh-huh. with everything. And regarding the MLK thing, I, I remember I showed you these pictures where even pictures back when that was happening, they were like, oh, we see this picture where MLK is happily like marching with the people and it's a peaceful protest. But what you don't, don't see is an hour later, everybody getting hosed down mm-hmm. and tear gas and everything, just like what is happening mm-hmm. today. We all see it as like, you know... It is very interesting because I I think I referenced this last week is we we've seen this before, whether it is something as powerful as MLK or if it's something like even artists like Van Gogh, 
People are not appreciated when they are alive and when they are mm-hmm. doing whatever it's they're doing, whether All it's the their time. art and craft, whether it's a, pr- a protest and a movement. Mm-hmm. They are not seen as good or appreciated in that moment. It has to be after they die. Yep. And then we suddenly change the narrative to being like they were a hero. Why were they not a hero then? when they were alive why did they have to die to become a hero see that's false to me people can be heroes and still be alive there we look we're surrounded by heroes nowadays with the pandemic and everything people who are working their butt off to do something for the greater good yeah i mean a song that touches on this that i love is kendrick lamar lamar uh modal man and like yeah he says like he, you have to be immortalized when you're dead like it's just you no one acknowledges you or, or shows like says you have value until you pass away it's as if we don't want to give your roses when you're alive to like make your ego feel like bigger or something like that it's like it, it's ridiculous Mm-mm, that's false because people deserve recognition when they're doing something good or powerful um if you're if you want to continue going i kind of want to hit on my friend's on this here because i've had some interesting comments and and back and forth with okay my my stuff's just kind of random stuff all right um i mean so well first of all i guess i can start with what i've seen this week before i go on to like stuff i've seen online personally i've had some really good productive conversations with some of my friends and colleagues Mm -hmm. um I think it's important to have those conversations because at the end of the day, things don't change unless we work to make them change and we educate from a kind place. You know, I went on my Instagram stories a few days ago and I talked about just this and it resonated with a lot of people that I've been seeing a lot of people who are unfriending and blocking people a lot, like by sprees and In one breath, I get it, especially, especially if you're a black person and you are feeling attacked or sheer ignorance or anything like that. I think for sure you guys have a little bit more leeway when it comes to sure, like you guys can block because I I, I believe, let me just finish by saying I believe when they say that the privileged people need to be the ones doing more of the work now Mm -hmm. and need to be the ones being true allies and stepping up and educating and learning and all that. It's true. So that's why I'm coming from a, a, I'm trying to come from a more understanding place of like, if you saw someone that you just truly like, you cannot take it. I'm not going to judge you at all for removing them rather than speaking up Mm -hmm. on my side. I feel like, You know, I've gotten unfollowed. I've gotten unfriended. And it does that doesn't really go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like we have this platform and now you're seeing who believes what. Let's talk like I'm not trying. I'm just trying to make it so in the end we all have a better world. Right. And we all can live in peace and love and kindness and harmony. And I even said on the Instagram stories, I know that sounds naive, but that's the sad part is that it literally sounds like I'm a child wanting something that can't exist. Mm -hmm. I still believe it can, but it takes a lot of effort and it takes a lot of people who are willing to educate and talk to people because if you don't talk about these things first of all people will never get the opportunity to learn something new or change and reframe their mind um i even saw like a meme that was very interesting it was um this person had a black lives matter sign and of course somebody comes along and says all lives matter and they go back they have a little back and forth Mm -hmm. and he explains the example we've heard time and time again And then finally, towards the end, the guy who said all eyes matter, he's like, but won't I look like a hypocrite or 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 weird if I change my mind and I I say something else now? And the person's like, no, you'll look like someone who learned and grew. And so then you see at the end of the little meme, 
you you see the Black Lives Matter sign, and, and like I think it said that or so, like they hold they held a sign that basically said like yeah that like that you know now I agree with that, mm-hmm. and I think that's so powerful because I do I wonder if some people maybe are scared of how they'll look if they change their mind, and I get that because we talked about it last week how I came from once believing all lives matter as well. Mm-hmm. But I think it's so powerful, honestly, to come from both sides, to see where I was back then and what I believe now. And I can explain to you why. And I don't know. I just I have so many thoughts in my head circulating with this topic. But what what did you want to respond in in regards to that first? I have no idea because I forgot. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. I yeah, it just... I don't know. So I've had really good conversations. I really, I enjoy, I've been basically telling people, just have an open heart and mind. I'm not here to argue with you for sure. I don't need more arguments in my life. I am here just to have a a real discussion. I will listen to what you have to say. Here's what I don't want, though. I will be objective on my end. I don't want it to be where I am talking about my views without getting too emotional where the other person now starts berating me or, you know, making a scene basically. Mm -hmm. Um, Because then I think at the end of the day, I use the example several times on that status I wrote where it's just like couples. You have to learn how to effectively healthy, have healthy communication um between the two of you and there's clearly going to be a a, a, an unhealthy and a healthy way i'm just trying to have healthy communication between people we can have opposing views and at the end of it if i don't change your mind i don't hate you that's not where i'm coming from i'm just trying to start the process of maybe opening up those doors so that you can see a little bit more Mm -hmm. or understand it a little bit differently as well Mm -hmm. um so it's been really great and i've i've had some friends who they've come to me and they've wanted to you know go through and say how do i do this or does this make sense if i post this or like i it's been really encouraging to see some people that i really care about want to make such a difference and want to be better Mm -hmm. it's been amazing so yeah, but it's been it's been a week as far as some of these conversations and some of these things. But I encourage you guys maybe try to talk to people before unfriending or unfollowing. And I know everybody's circumstance is different. Here's the thing. I said I tried to differentiate it. I get a toxic person. Yes. Don't you don't want those people in your life. If they are straight up toxic, get rid of that person. But if they are a person that you guys are genuinely friends, friendly, um, and you think that this could be an open, honest conversation, try it. It's going to be effort. It's going to be tiring. But try that first. That's my that's my two cents there. And then you can do your stuff, and then I'll go back to the random that stuff That was nice later. and all, but my viewpoint is coming in with a bit more aggression and uh, annoyance. <laughs> Which I can completely respect. So, man, let me let me rock it. I got I got some I got my thoughts here. I'm trying to compile. Okay. But uh, so a few days ago, I, it was my first time applying to one of these comments within like the past like two weeks or and change that this has been happening. And ultimately, I've realized having these discussions with my white friends. Because I've had a few so far. All I get is excuses. I don't want to hear your excuses. I don't want to hear that, yo, when everyone, when all these people in, poli- in you know, in the, in the political world turn old and gray and die and, you know, we come up and all that stuff, things are going to change. I don't want to hear that. Stop what you're like, yo, this is impossible. Or, or this isn't possible happening. You're, you're you know, it's laughable. Mm-hmm. I don't want to hear that. That sounds so stupid. Like, dog, things aren't the same that way they were back in, like, the 90s, let alone back in 2010. Like, 
things change yes to sit there and say i have to wait another 20 30 years for these people to pass and get you know get out of power or whatever the heck to happen it's it's ridiculous first off would they want to do that what would they want to do that what does that mean think about that they're saying they're telling you to wait and just continue to be oppressed and sad they don't care that's how, the problem how, someone someone can't understand that if, if they haven't had to go through it if you don't and one of my friends they don't believe that white privilege is a thing dog mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dog dog my little brother has gotten in trouble just because he's black and playing around with the white kid when he was in public, public school for a brief period and we had to get him out of that like you're just just automatically you're assumed like you're the guilty one just for being black like i'm i'm pretty sure my friends that have kids don't have the, don't have a have to have the conversation that when their kids go out you know that they they have to keep their hands to themselves or you know make sure everything is obvious so like no one like if you pick up something like i just went out to the store earlier <laughs> because i'm black and i have to be aware of my surroundings and where i'm at i i don't put something and like put it close to my pocket to look like i'm, I'm gonna steal it like i put mm-hmm. something like it has to be a good length away from my body so it doesn't like mm-hmm. these aren't things that i'll say white people i'd like to say i'm not i can't speak for other races but i'm sure white people don't have to think about i'd sit there like dog it's so many things it's just when i walk past security it's just making sure that i'm not i don't like my awkward self doesn't trigger and make this person question me and stop me for something like it's just so many things you have to think on in addition to just living your life and not being given the benefit of the doubt um i was just thinking about this recently like it gets real when you have to sit there and and you have to look for a doctor or a therapist or something and you have to find a therapist that 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 or or doctor that relates to like uh, a black person for example um we just switched dentists a few months ago and you know lauren went first and then i followed after and that was one of my things i don't think i shared it to you at the time but when I, that was just one of my things in my mind. I just hope I'm comfortable going there. Mm-hmm. And it's not because I'm going to make anyone uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It's just people are going to be automatically uncomfortable of me. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know the signs every single time. I've lived in this body for close to 27 years. Like, come on. So I go to this dentist. Yo, it's dope. The, the person working on me is a black woman. She was cool. And then the, the person that owns the, the dentistry, I guess is what it would be called is a as a white guy mm-hmm. and he came in and he started talking to me and like right off the jump like i felt so comfortable he didn't give me like these weird vibes like we went way back we had a car accident probably like a year and a half or maybe two years mm-hmm. or something like that two and we had to october yeah and we had to um go to what was it physical therapy and like again i like that we went to someone that you knew mm-hmm. and like they were cool because being black you worry if someone's gonna feel comfortable touching you or not (laughs) especially in physical therapy where they may have to show you they may have to crack your back or so like Mm -hmm. (laughs) like these are the things that people don't have to sit here and worry about and you just take for granted you just walk into your little you know dentist doctors whatever therapist and you feel comfortable you're at home but as a black person i have to sit there and make sure this person's comfortable with me because if i go to a a doctor's office and they don't feel comfortable to you know suggest something that could help me because they they may think i may lash out on them because of how they perceive me to be i'm not getting the the like the best out of this doctor Mm -hmm. the service you deserve and it's like i get if you're white you can't understand it and you probably never will but just understand what what people are out there protesting what people are now upset for because it's been happening for a long time it's not just like we said in the last episode it's not just about mm-hmm. the police it's about the people the police are one part of it and once that de-escalates it will hopefully then you know slowly change i'll, I'll be fine with the change of like regular people i'm fine with that um we can take but the police are like the major issue right now let's get them down over time Oh, now I can wait for these old people that you know have races, you know moms and dads and doctors and, and all those, all those race people that feel some type of way against black people to go and die off. I'm cool with that. I don't mind waiting that way. But for people that set the law and ha- and literally can lock me up, is ridiculous. <sighs> so these conversations with my friends have been frustrating. I don't want to hear your excuses. And when I sit there and talk to you, and you don't agree regardless of what what party you're in because i really don't care about that Mm -hmm. 
that Trump has been divisive for the last four years. Like, I get it. Joe Biden is not the greatest choice for anyone. But, dog, I don't even like having a boss that, that likes to be, like... <sighs> People like Trump because he, he says what's on his mind. I hate that. I had a boss at one of my old jobs back in the day that, like, treated me like we're buddy-buddy and just say stuff. And just... It wasn't professional. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had to leave. I needed to be in a professional setting. So, yeah, I want a professional president. I don't... No, I don't rock like that. Like, that's ridiculous. I don't want someone to sit there and speak their mind or tell you know tell me how they're feeling or whatever. I'm just here to work. Like, keep it professional. We're here for one thing, and that's what it is. To address some of my other friends, that because it really it seems like if you if you you know you can't support Black Lives Matter if you have a family or friends that are in the police, and that seems to just take precedent, dog. That is ridiculous. We are talking about human beings at the end of this. I have, I, yo, I have a couple friends that are police officers. Like, I'm not saying that they're bad people. At the end of the day, we were just saying, at the, at the very core of it, I am a person. I should be treated as a person. I should be given the benefit of the doubt that even though my skin color is black, that I'm not the the kid that you should come up and and question or you know, ask for the ID to see if they have warrants and, you know, to do all this extra stuff if I'm not committing a crime and just assume, yo, he's black. He must be doing something wrong. It's it's ridiculous. So that's my frustration with it all. And I'm tired of my friends, the friends that say they're in the middle, they're not really in the middle. They're not, they're not, they're not the stuff they're sharing, I hate to be negative this, and, and, you know, run your air off with this. The stuff that I keep seeing for these people that say, hey, I'm in the middle. I'm in between this. I, you know, I'm not for that. I'm not for that. You clearly are picking sides when you're sitting here show, sharing videos of looters, showing videos of, of the other side saying, you know, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. And you're clearly playing a side. I'm, yeah. And I really want to cut people off, but I know that won't change anything. Mm. That's not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. I really want to, but it's like I don't. I'm always someone that likes to know both sides. I like to have an understanding of both sides. Mm-hmm. Like you know me, I watch a lot of content on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I like understanding everything and ev- anything, mm-hmm. so I can understand. If I really cared, I would watch Fox News, but I don't care for all that, the all that stuff. <laughs> I mean, news is a little different because they they have but their I'm own say- agenda. But no, I'm just saying for because there's two sides of news right, right. of like which side they cater to. Right. But I just I, I can't deal with all that. But I'm just saying in general, yo, show me the pros and cons because back in the day when I was a kid, I used to love to debate people because everyone would come with their opinions and not come with real facts, and I yes, hated he, that. I can confirm he likes to debate. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's just. It's it's interesting how people don't want to sit there with their feelings and say, this isn't right, this isn't right, we shouldn't be looting, we shouldn't be doing this, that, but don't understand what the reason is. Like, yo, if you... I'm going to give you something real. For Before I moved, before we moved out into this place, I used to go to the gym all the time at night. There wasn't a night that would go by that my mom would, you know would say she would be worried for me or, you know, be careful and all that stuff as I was going out to the gym at, like, you know, 10, 11 o'clock because it was a 24-hour gym and it was less busy at that time. And it's like, yeah, I thank God nothing happened. I never got stopped and all that stuff. But it's like, it's just something that you have to, like, just be, like, have in your mind because police are out there sitting, you know, you know, at a at a freaking car dealership lot just waiting for someone to come by and, and look suspicious. Like, just anything like that. And it's just... It's sad. Like, I I hope, who knows, I hope that I don't have to think about, you know, oh, there's a police officer that could, you know, take my son today or take my daughter today or whatever the case is when it comes time for when we have kids and they're, you know, what, 18, 19, whatever the age is for them to go out at night and for them to just simply have a good time and not have to worry about someone portraying them as a threat. Like, I can't wait for that. 
Yeah, and it's funny because I know in the past when we started living together and you would go out at night to the gym, you would always tell me, oh, like, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Like, you don't have to worry about me, whatever. It's not going to happen. But see, you do get where I was coming from because I would always worry with you going yeah, out late at night. I don't need someone else to put extra worry on me. Like I uh, get that. But I, I was dog, worried because I, get, I, I, yeah, it's it's my obviously loved Obviously, I get where I you're coming it. from. Regardless, I've lived in this body right. for close to 27 years. I understand how people are gonna perceive me. Mm-hmm. Like it's just, yeah, I just, I, I get it. I, I know what the signs are. It's annoying. It's frustrating. But that's that's sadly what my life is. Also, I'd like to point out the people who like what you were saying. Okay, we're just going to have a yawn first. Excuse me. (laughs) Um, The people like what you were saying who support the cops and their families or friends like more than the movement of Black Lives Matter. Um, People who have loved ones in the force, they, you know, they say how much they worry about them every day. Coming home safe, not dying, all this. And I just look at that and I say, I totally get that. I'm not undermining that because, sure, we all want our loved ones to come home to us. However, they chose that lifestyle. They chose to go into a job that has that risk. Mm Mm-hmm. You did not choose to be born in your and skin, which has that risk attached to it regardless. You can uh-huh. do any job or anything in your life. Mm-hmm. It's there. You can't get rid of that. So there, that's the difference. But no, people don't want to hear that. Mm-hmm. Again, I want your people to come home safe too. I can say that. I'm not trying to say, oh, you don't deserve that because everybody deserves that. Yeah, we, we all have families. We all exactly. want to get back safe. All I want you to see is the difference of that person could take off that badge mm-hmm. and they look like just any other white person. They can take off the badge. They can retire. They can quit. They can go to a whole other job and they never have to experience that again. You don't have that choice. Well, and here's the next thing because there was a police officer that was killed. I forgot what state it was. Because there's been, you know, police shootings and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. he, was, he was killed trying to stop looters. And he was black. And people try using that, like, as an example, like, his life matters. I 100% agree that this police officer that was black, his life does matter. He chose to be a police officer regardless of, like, it's, it's one thing when you choose a job that's going to put you, like, if you're a bouncer, if you're a security guard, if you're anything that, that has to, you know, holds like what would you say like have have guard around people or something like that you know the risks that come with it and it's like at the end of the day that guy he i we appreciate his service he put his life in the hands of protecting people i i didn't i my life shouldn't be on the hands of someone else where they they able to to take it or put me in jail or whatever for me not doing a single thing and simply just living my life we've seen it with someone just jogging you know, we had it two weeks ago with uh, with Mr. Cooper just in, in Central Park bird watching. A lady can just sit there and call the cops and and try to get police to then you know do something to this black guy. It's ridiculous. So in response to that, I can't find what I was exactly looking for, but I've seen on TikTok multiple times. Um, these people who say they work in like psych wards and um, with, you know, high risk psych patients and things like that and they said if we can restrain a patient without harming them at all why can you like that's that's it at the end of the day these because both healthcare workers police officers firefighters these are our first responders these are our people that we are supposed to be calling on to protect us Mm -hmm. to help us to care for us why if if healthcare workers can restrain these people on a daily basis because they need to be restrained because they're lashing out or they're you know they could put those healthcare workers in harm's way Mm -hmm. 
why can police officers not do the same so that you, the police officer is not getting harmed, but neither is the person? Because at the end of the day, don't you want the person to be, you know, either serving or, <clears throat> you know, whoever gets justice for whatever in the end? Like, so why? It's just, so there's that. And there's also the fact that I saw someone say, they're like, notice how firefighters are, are never like in this. They're still the heroes. They're never the ones that are like, uh, you know, it, it is police officers we're focused on for a reason. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. So I just found that very interesting because it's true. All right. Now, the next thing I want to get into is how are we going to make change happen? And over the past week, a lot of, a lot of uh, governors have come out. Um, I know Michigan's governor has said something. Uh, what is it? Is it Indiana? I think their governor is. Uh, no, Minnesota. Minnesota's governor has something. Um, I really just I don't really follow those states and I don't have anything to research on them. But I do know New York since I just saw a few days ago. Um, Andrew Cuomo's like whole well a couple things he want, he plans on doing, making not only one hate crimes, you know, a, a <laughs> literally that a crime. So if you do call the police. And it's blatantly a hate crime where you see black people out barbecuing. You see a black person bird watching. Literally, whatever the reason is, you're getting charged. Like, it's ridiculous. I love that. Um, the next one was the band of chokeholds, which is great. Uh, and that's just, it's not just specifically chokeholds, but just, just anything where it puts pressure around your neck. You shouldn't be doing that at all to someone. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because um, clearly, as we've seen with police they they don't know when too much is pressure when someone's like i can't breathe it's ridiculous um they they i don't know really much about this part but i guess the attorney general is going to work independent of the the police department which i guess was has been like a sticking point because it's because they may side more with the police department since they were like a part of it in a sense i guess um so that that's going to change there's just so many things. I guess supposedly there's an article going, not an, an article, I guess. You could say it, that's on Vox. Um, and they have eight data points that will pretty much decrease police violence by 72%. Um, require de escalation 100%. Because I don't know why we're sitting here. You know what's going to agitate someone. You're a random person. You're already a police officer. So people are really going to feel, I'll say, minorities. I'll say because I, I can't speak for white people. Minorities are really going to feel um, weird if you approach a situation. They already perceive you as a threat. So, yeah, you, let's let's start de-escalating. Like, I, I get it. We all want to make it back to our families. Let's not, like, escalate the situation, like, similar to what happened with uh, Philando Castile, where he literally told the police officer he has a gun just to make him aware. And this guy panicked and shot him, which is ridiculous. Um requiring a warning before shooting which is great so i know what you're gonna do mm -hmm. and don't just say i'm gonna shoot you bang like <laughs> tell me what you're gonna do <laughs> so we're, like it's just clear communication and not shooting to kill yeah. like that's a whole other thing yeah. that's because think about it these these all these cases we've heard where they shoot someone 20 40 times yeah they don't care like what is the idea no a lot. They because don't care. No, I think that should be a thing because think about it. There's very few times it the threat is that large that you need to kill the person. Sure, if the person comes at you with a rifle or a gun, whatever, you do what you got to do. But in general, shoot them in the knee. Shoot them, shoot them somewhere that's going to hurt and incapacitate them to the point where then you could do what you need to do as a police officer and enforcing the law. It's that simple. You're taught in the academy where to shoot and, and why and how and for what. But this is forgotten. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we're just going to shoot off a, a hundred rounds. Why? Yeah. Gotta make sure they're dead. But for what? Because Most times, they don't need to be dead. Because they need to die. They no, they do it. not. Yeah. See, that that is so sad. Dog, it is what it is. But it, that's, it's, that's it's, sad it in is. its own right. Whatever. <laughs> See, I don't like it, guys. He's too numb. <laughs> That's the problem here. That's sad in its own right. Um, mm -mm. Another thing is exhaust all other means before shooting. 
which mm-hmm. should be an obvious thing, but mm-hmm. I guess mm-hmm. not so obvious. You know what's ridiculous? That that Brianna Taylor case that just got reopened, mm-hmm. which I'm so happy about. Mm-hmm. Those officers should be charged. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand how you can have a knock. What was it a knock warrant? Warrant or oh, what was it? It's like a knock order or something like that, where they can just like bust into your place. Mm-hmm. And no one, no matter what race you are, no one feels that a police officer should just. Bust into your place right. with the suspicion that you have drugs. Like, right. No one would feel safe in that circumstance. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. What reasonable... What, why is this a thing? I don't really understand that. Also, if you're there for drugs, why are you killing the person? Well, because they shot at the police. Oh, right, right, right. But you break into my place. But still, right, I'm right. I'm thinking exactly. that you are a threat. Exactly. It was in the middle of the night. Exactly. You bust into the place. I'm going to pull my gun and start yes. shooting. If I hear, exactly, if I hear something. I'm under attack. Like, uh-huh. it is ridiculous. So I hope those cops get, get charged and convicted. It's ridiculous. Um, the next one is duty to intervene, which is important. Because as you saw with George Floyd, they did not intervene. So, yeah, making it the officer's duty that, like, yo, if you see something bad, it's it's a see something, say something type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, if you, you see an officer not doing the right thing, you have to intervene. I assume what's going to happen with that is you're going to be held accountable also if you're not intervening and you literally see something. Like that that uh 75-year-old guy that the cops oh pushed down. Oh, my gosh. And literally, they, they focus oh, on the, the protester so guy before they even helped the, the old man. He was giving, do you know he was trying to give back the helmet? He had the helmet in his hand, and he was trying to go up to him. He's like, hey. And then the, the guy's like, move back. And like, just like, Mm-mm. it's an old guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, man. In addition to what you were just saying, now I might have just lost it. Oh, no. Duty to intervene. Oh, yes. Um, people were saying that the one police officer out of the four with George Floyd that tried to say something twice that he should face lesser charges because he tried. I kind of agree with that just because they, they, they then went in to explain he's still on a probationary period. He's a cop that's been in the force like a year or so versus the guy who was kneeling on his neck and he's been in it for 19 years. Um, so one, he's in this weird position where he doesn't want to, risk his job yeah, and it's a new he, job. right he he's a newbie yeah. he doesn't want to he he's looking at this person who's seasoned and being like oh okay this yeah. makes sense but at the same time he brought in his knowledge he had said his knowledge from the um police academy <sighs> i forget what the term was i'd have to find it but basically there was this term of like oh isn't that gonna cause this if you keep doing that to you know and and so he brought that in so he re- he tried so i i do I agree. agree i agree with the whole you should intervene he so yeah maybe if the guy if the guy that said something was a couple years in he would have pushed the cop off and like hey like you gotta stop but i i, I right. can understand that you being new and this right. being a senior person like we have right. had in all jobs you're supposed to show respect like, to your hey. seniors and like and so you're supposed to learn from them right so it's like it's this weird yeah. you're torn but he spoke up twice so i mean that's I that's more to be said than the others um the next one is ban shooting at moving vehicles this one i agree if the vehicle is is moving away from you if it's coming at you i i i can't knock an officer well, for right, shooting like at the vehicle a, again if it's a real threat to your life yeah it, uh, yeah See, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, so yeah, if someone that. is actually authentically threatening your life, if they're going to come shooting at you, if they're going to come stab you, if they're going to actually do Drive something at, yeah, to you, yeah. yes, that's where those things are implemented. I get that. Um, I don't know what this means. Maybe you understand it or we have to look it up, but require use of force continuum. You want to look it up? Whatever, whatever force continuum is, because I have no idea. But I'm trying to learn. Why are you typing the whole thing out? Damn. (laughs) 
Be here with us, guys. We're trying to trying to give you all the information. A use of force continuum is a standard that provides law enforcement offers and officers and civilians with guidelines as to how much force may be used against a resisting subject in any in a given situation. Generally, each different agency will have their own use of force policy. Okay. So they want a general one. It sounds like that goes across all of them. Yeah, to know if you use right. like like for example that seventy five year old that they shoved that was. Yeah, that wasn't the right force. You should be applying right. to someone. You shouldn't that just was dumb. <laughs> and he, yo, they put in the report he tripped. Like, how can you? How can we trust what police are putting in these reports? Mm-hmm. If like, dog, the guy mm-hmm. didn't trip. You push him, and he's like trying to freaking catch his balance. People, and like, people are saying because I believe he's still alive, yeah, which he, is a but miracle. He's in serious like condition. Well, right, though. which is a miracle in itself because one, if you're bleeding out your skull in your ear, Ugh. that's highly urgent it's bad two he's older which yeah. means he's not a, right that. that's not a good that's, that's a not a good combination life. three people are saying if he is like you said in severe condition or he comes out of this with a, a disability or something sue the crap out of them that yeah. is not okay yeah. like they have to pay mm-hmm. i agree um, and the last one is require comprehensive reporting, uh, which I guess is not a thing now. But yeah, let's let's have detailed reporting. And also, detailed I don't know how accurate com- reporting. What detailed accurate reporting? Yeah, I don't know about <laughs> you asking a lot there. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how body cams can be turned off or why why they're turned off or if I don't believe it that. all the time. I think sometimes that's a tactic that they say so that they don't have to show what they actually did. Like it's ridiculous. I, I don't believe that at all. all the guy it. in Louisville, Kentucky, that wasn't even protesting. He was a black guy that owned a barbecue sh- uh, place there. It's ridiculous that he he died for no reason. Like, it's just yeah. It's I love watching Vice because I feel like Vice is probably the most like realistic, like objective mm-hmm. news. Like they're not sitting here trying to like show you fluff things, and they're just they're just out there like reporting what's actually happening. And like here you go, mm-hmm. like that's it. Mm-hmm. And it's just interesting seeing how, like, yeah, what's happening to, like, these business owners of different, like, like, everyone's views. And it's mm-hmm. just, it's interesting. And I'm starting to feel two things here. Because there was two things that came out throughout all this this past week. Which was, a lot of the time, what's happening in these peaceful protests, the police do something, which then triggers everyone else. And then, you know, everyone starts getting shot, and the police use excessive force, and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. And... I'm starting to agree seeing this over and over, seeing these videos come out and just, just, yeah, it's wild. And then the second thing is that there's a lot more white people that are starting things as far as like looting or, or breaking into things, whatever the mm-hmm. case is. Mm-hmm. And that's like leading the black people into like these a- areas where you probably shouldn't be in there because you're already a threat. So you're going to make yourself even more of a threat. But, but it's a, it's really a mix of the people doing the looting and rioting. It is not just black people. Well, by any means and here's the thing they want to paint that as it's just black people yep. dog we are a minority the, mm-hmm. we're a minority for a reason mm-hmm. there's not many black people mm-hmm. like when you look at these even in, in connecticut you're looking at these uh these uh protests mm-hmm. you see a sprinkle of black people but i i appreciate it and love it that the, uh, you see a lot of white people also because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, again that goes back to we need to be allies we need to be there with them yeah we need to show up. Yeah. Um, I saw a statistic. I believe it was that there's 13.6%, if I'm saying that correctly, of black people in America. Like, bl- th- like that's the percentage that makes up the mm-hmm. black community in America. And pe- because a lot of people want to say white, more white people are killed than black people. Mm-hmm number wise yes because there's more but percentage wise no when you look at the percentage of black people killed to the percentage of white people that is where the discrepancy is that's where you have to understand that's a problem because it's overwhelmingly more in the black community Mm -hmm. for that reason it's not about, oh, more people are killed. No, percentages are really important here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got to say, shout out to, if you guys have seen it, 
shout out to the white girl that is ha- like having these conversations with her parents and recording it. I've seen like a clip go for like four minutes and change. Mm-hmm. And like her dad's sitting there like, no, you're wrong. And it's just like, mm-hmm. I love seeing this on Twitter, seeing that these these kids and people our age are having these conversations with their parents. And yeah, it's making your situations uncomfortable, but it is needed. Mm-hmm. As much as they're not going to change their views, the fact that you're, you're saying something is is great. Um, and yeah, like I said in, earlier, I do believe once these older people pass on, just like we're all cool with gay and lesbian people. You know, I got a couple friends that are gay and lesbian. Shout out to them. LGBTQ plus. Exactly. Community. Um, yeah, like it, things just will get better. So I, I have that hope. But one thing that has to get nipped in the butt is is making sure these police aren't as aggressive, especially and targeting black people. People of the LGBTQ community have also come out and said, remember that our movement started with riots too. Mm-hmm. Stonewall was a riot. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like they are super supportive because I've been, it's interesting because I've been speaking with people of that community this week as well. And I say... How I feel bad that I, I I feel like I can't focus on Pride Month as much right now because we are still in the midst of this. Um, and I don't want it to come across as like I'm not valuing that mm-hmm. as well. But they are so quick to say, no, like I get it. Like don't like it you don't need to focus on that right now. Like this is the matter at hand. Like these are the communities that have been oppressed understand. And they are here for it. They are here to support, which is, yeah. I think, so amazing because it you have common ground. You've had to fought. You've had to fight for just general human decency. Yeah, and it, it's funny you say that because, yeah, like a year ago, we were talking about like how Boston, for example, wanted to have their like the straight straight parade. Yeah, we were just talk, talking about that and like true. Yeah, it's wild. Now look at us a year later, still still here fighting for something. But mm-hmm. yeah, like, yo, it's it's so dope. Like, cause you know, one of my close friends, um, he was at our wedding. Like, it's gay. And, like, it's so dope. Like, seeing him like post things and share things. And I'm like, yo, I think like I appreciate it. And you know, he's in Michigan, and and he, I'm sure he has more white people friends and fan. Well, obviously family <laughs> that are black. And I like I appreciate other people speaking up for something that that is also important because at the end of the day like if you don't understand that people just want to be treated as people and not as as other or less than Mm -hmm. that that's all it is and and who better to know um other than the lgbtq community and also the minorities of the world Mm -hmm. like let's be real Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and i i just want to say how there's a tweet that i i really loved it all in, in all caps it says, why is ending racism so controversial? Like, why is there so much disagreement? Mm-hmm. That's all we're saying. Let's like, what is, why? Why are you mad at that? Because, you know, at the end of the day, I've seen stuff how it also said, as a white person, you might feel threatened during these times. You might feel like your rights are being diminished or mm-hmm. taken away. You might feel like you are now going to have less leverage. But the thing is, that's what needs to happen. Which doesn't even make it's sense. going to be uncomfortable because, yes, we're on this pedestal. And the pedestal needs to get knocked down because everybody needs to be on the same playing field. Okay? That's the thing. Mm-hmm. So it's very interesting because I do. I see those people too. Who are there, they're very, they're very nervous about this because they don't they don't want to give up that power but what's Let's gonna happen like, like i don't understand that what's gonna happen less opportunity for them because now wow. black people are seen as more of a human like let's say it how it is like i mean hey they said we were three-fifths of men so i mean sad exactly um, i'm sa- i'm yeah yep. so i gotta say yep. two shout outs here shout out to justin trudeau uh the prime minister of canada <laughs> after trump went and did his whole photo op and his whole like little dance thing um they went and asked justin trudeau about what he thought about trump's whole thing and dog uh, he took 20 seconds to like gather what he wanted to say because it's just mm-hmm. when i saw that 
any real, any reasonable person is going to sit there and be like, wow, like this is how you're treating your people. Mm-hmm. So it's wild. And I also mm-hmm. got to say another shout out <laughs> to James Mattis, um, who denounced Trump and describes him as a threat to the Constitution, which I really do not understand how people do not see this. Someone that was this close to this guy, tr- Trump was told General um, James Mattis as like the greatest you know, greatest guy ever back in 20, 2017, 2018, around there and all that stuff before he uh, he left Trump. And now Trump's like, nope, didn't like him. I had to fire him, this and that. As always, he tries to freaking uh, manip- manipulate the situation. So James Mattis came out and said, John- Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. Instead, he divides, he tries to divide us. He need we need a leader. God damn, I'm messing this up. And we need a leader who will take actions that address societal problems. Shooting when the looting starts mentality only breeds more hate from every direction. Mm-hmm. And just to chime in here, after Trump did his whole speech thing, you you could look up clips in Philadelphia, a group of white men going out to start attacking protesters with bats, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, General Mattis continues saying, instead of treating the symptoms with violence, try curing the disease. He goes on to say, instructions given by the military departments to our troops before the Normandy invasion reminded soldiers that the Nazi slogan for destroying us was divide and conquer. Our American answer and answer is in union, there is strength. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'll just, yeah. I'll add something. I saw a TikTok of a woman who was very powerful. And at the end of it, she says, don't be mad that you don't have a movement. Be be happy that you don't need one. Yep. I thought that was powerful. Some some of these people that are coming out and, and they're speaking up, they have some really powerful things to say. I, it, that's something that, I don't think I would have ever come up with on my own. So some of these people who have these like quotable content, like, wow, that's that's powerful because it's true. You know, all too often, sometimes white people will feel like they're being left out of something. Mm hmm. And that's why it's, oh, all lives matter. Or straight people pride month or whatever. Right. The heck, like, right. So right. So. No, that no. Like, I am so glad I don't need a movement for the color of my skin. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because that's one more stress that I would have to take on for my whole life. Mm-hmm. I can see that. It's not It's not fun. I can tell you. From exactly. Experience. I can see that. I have, I already have the stress of being a woman. So I have that mm-hmm. part. But I mean, and so then you talk about a black woman. Dog, shout out to all the black women oh, out there. I I queens. am so worried when we have if we have a daughter. As much as I would love that, I worry for that. The strength they have to embody is admirable, mm-hmm. to say the least. You know, and another thing I'll add. So it's been very interesting seeing some beauty companies, um, from my beauty side. First of all, there was a billboard in L.A. that was, um, quote unquote, vandalized. They sprayed Black Lives Matter on it. Jen Atkin hair responded and said, made our sign even better. And I was just like, that's how you do it. That was amazing. Um, And then L'Oreal is interesting. They put speaking out is worth it on their Instagram. Obviously, that's a play on their slogan. But then someone brought up how just a little b- while ago, L'Oreal fires trans model Monroe Bergdorf for speaking out against racism. Mm-hmm. So you just, you came across two different communities now. Trans black woman. Um, and it was because they were speaking about racism but now it's popular so now y- y- it's okay like see mm, and that's the tough thing to add to that like you so 
with this whole you saw the whole thing of uh during blackout tuesday a bunch of companies coming out mm-hmm. and it's funny seeing the 49ers say yo we stand for this and all that stuff but yet back in 2016 they had an issue with colin kaepernick and yep. nfl just came out saying they're sorry you know they were wrong and, and all that stuff and then support and it's just ridiculous mm-hmm. like i i can't rock especially all these companies that just say things they they're just putting out little posts dogs start donating money to these funds and help people out there's um alta is another good one so i have always been more of a supporter of alta over sephora just because of how they've conducted their businesses over the years, how they treat their employees, how their employees treat customers, um, just various things. Um, but more than ever this year, that has solidified because, first of all, during the pandemic, we saw how they responded and Sephora straight up fired all their part time employees. Ulta let all of their employees stay home with pay and. Um, Huge difference. And then when it comes to this movement, I haven't really seen much with Sephora. But Ulta, I got an email and it was celebrating our black owned brands and it had all of the different brands they have, which is a good amount um, and some really good products, might I add. And then also on their Instagram, because um, popular uh, influencer Jackie Ina, who has always been very vocal about the importance of um black women and black owned brands and and all of that she came out and she basically was saying to beauty brands she's like in the next 72 hours i want to see all of you release your um your numbers as far as who you have in leadership who is black Mm -hmm. ulta came out the next day and posted on their instagram um we're proud to have uoma beauty and founder sharon shutter or shooter i'm not sure in our family of brands so we're pulling up to her challenge we recognize that we have work to do and we will here's where we stand today we are 18 percent black board members 13 percent black executive team leaders six percent black corporate associates 47 percent people of color 92 percent women so they aren't scared like I will say the way Ulta has responded to both the pandemic and this movement has spoken volumes over Sephora. So um, I think it's very interesting. Keep keep an eye out at how whatever it is you're interested in. Watch just just see what's happening, because I even saw, for example, I follow a couple piercers on Instagram because of all the ear piercings I have. Um, And one of them had even said how she was very disappointed that only one major um, jewelry company had come out and said anything. And that, you know, this this can change who I support. Um, I will say, remember, I do think silence is complicity. However, remember, if someone is maybe saying some stuff, but not everything or not being as vocal as other people, they may be learning and they may be um, not wanting to say the wrong thing either. So if someone is supportive, but also not as loud or aggressive as some other people, I'm okay with that. Personally, I think it still shows where you stand. Mm -hmm. Um but still, like some of these big companies, like look at your companies, okay? Look at big companies that make a lot of money, okay? That are are not necessarily small businesses because it's very interesting to see how they all react. Mm-hmm. I don't have much else to add. Um, I guess to throw in something there, I thought it was cool, even though I'm going to shout out my boss, even though uh, he doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> I thought it was cool during this whole thing happening uh, earlier last week. He reached out and he's like, you know, just checking in. Um, you know, essentially, you know, he he understands it and he's, he's sorry for what's all happening. And, you know, if there's anything you can do to help, he like just just a lot of just a lot of love and in, in my boss reaching out. And it's like you don't have to do that. But to just show someone cares like that is is dope. Um, so, yeah, shout out to him, even though he's not going to hear it. But. I see you. I will also say um, people are remembering what people and companies have done in the past. Mm -hmm. Okay. For example, um, there's this picture when the AP cut out the Ugandan activist Vanessa Nakade. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Of um, 
of the picture when it was the picture that had um wow. what's her name in it oh some white lady no i'm totally oh um the young girl who's yeah. the activist oh my gosh i'm totally blanking I feel like her name is gretchen but Gre- oh her. gosh gretchen thorn thornburg yes Deal. yes her so it's a picture that had her and a few other activists why did they take her why did they oh, yo. they literally that just is disgusting yes they literally just cropped out that is disgusting the dark skinned black girl and left all of the white people in the photo and so someone had tweeted remember yada yada and she retweeted and she said i remember wow mm-hmm. the activist She's herself founder of the rise up movement mm-hmm. Yo, so there's ridiculous. that example there is oh i just oh i feel like i just lost it there was another example i had on the tip of my tongue <clears throat> i just to roast you on, on the podcast this is why we have a you know a pre-production list here you know what I'm trying to be authentic. As, as I have said for numerous podcast episodes, that, but you still do not use it. Sir, our okay. podcasts flow pretty well, if I do say so myself. Yeah, but it would flow better if you had things in order. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> um, there have been multiple displays, whether it's magazines, websites, mm-hmm. companies, all this, where they've either cut someone out, they've... Yep. they've made them look lighter Mm -hmm. um it just all of these things so people are seeing that now they're Mm -hmm. like remember when um also remember when i think this is where i was going with it remember when brock turner actually raped a girl behind a dumpster and he got to only serve three months in jail and then he got let out but then how many how many black people are in for what 20 years for marijuana here's here's the funny thing or five kids from central park getting arrested and being in jail for for 20 years or 15 years for not doing anything and having no proof of it yep yep so either nothing or a seriously light offense Mm -hmm. okay or let's talk about the fact that a cop can kill somebody and they might get away scot free. Brianna Taylor. I so that is my point. I remember years ago being so disgusted when I heard that that story about Brock Turner. Mm-hmm. Disgusted, mm-hmm. and because also remember, as a woman, that is something we all fear. Mm-hmm. Because things happen in daylight. Things happen quickly and easily. And that is a fear, Mm -hmm. similar to your fear of living and being shot. So the fact that, yeah, he got away after three months made me want to vomit. And so I can completely understand the outrage you guys have Mm -hmm. when you see cops or white supremacists get away with literally murder. Mm -hmm. Literally. So, just something to think about. Think about how the color of your skin can affect the offense and the time you serve. That's all. Yeah, on that note, I don't really have anything. I didn't queue up a type of relationship advice topic for us to to do. Yeah, it'd be kind of random. <laughs> I, I really hope episode. that we can get back to, you know, our... Oh. It's hard to do normal content in these uh, coronavirus protest days since it started. But, mm-hmm. you know, hoping for, like, other news to start coming out uh, for the next episode. You know, as always, I appreciate and, and love and support everyone that's out there protesting and, and supporting this movement in any which way you can. Whether it's demo- uh, sorry, it's in- <laughs> donating. Uh, protesting or just educating your friends and family it is all Mm -hmm. worth it and beneficial to get to the end goal of just everyone being treated as equal and that's all that's what it is at the end of the day it's everyone versus racism it's not a a black Mm -hmm. white black cop it's not like any any of these versus situations other than us against racism that's it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um anything else couple just last minute thoughts one Clint Smith tweeted the NFL should formally apologize to Colin Kaepernick. Not going to happen. But he has a point. He has a point. And on a funny note, 
true but funny note to leave it a little lighter. It said, Generation Z will be afraid to ask a waiter for ranch, but will body slam a cop. So true. This generation coming up, one, they're, it's very interesting, but two, I said this the other day, they're going to change the world. Mm-hmm. This generation is not taking it any longer. I mean, our generation is like, I think, in the middle as far as that. Mm-hmm. Some people... You know, are on each side, but I think this upcoming generation, they see right through everything, mm-hmm. and they're not having it. Yep, and that's really inspiring. I'm with it. it needs to happen. Well, <laughs> guys, like I said last week, thank you, thank you, thank you for making it to the end of this episode. I appreciate it, as always, especially during these uh these crazy times we're in. Um, with that being said, as always, we would love to hear your feedback, whether that's through a voice message through anchor.fm in the episode descriptions, you can send us a voice message. We'll play it on the next, uh, podcast episode, or feel free to send us an email at page simpsons at gmail.com. Also in the description of this podcast episode, <sighs> with that being said, guys, stay safe, stay blessed, much love and support. I'm Shadell, co-host of Page and the Simpsons. I'm joined by my lovely wife, Lauren. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Peace out.